<clears throat> so we're doing lottery and we're getting specific things and we'll have values, which I'll show later. Uh, so A plus B minus N factorial and factorial. So this is the general probability for event X. <clears throat> so the homework itself has specific numbers they have, which I'll use similar, but not the same numbers or else, you know, numbers. So they have lottery or drawing A has five balls. Drawing B has 41 balls. Your N is going to be equal to five and X is equal to two because they want to know how the probability of pulling two events. So they, they give you A equals five, B equals 41, and equals five, X equals two. <clears throat> so I'm going to do something similar, but with slightly different numbers. Let's say there are eight in the first one. Forty-five in the second one, but you still, you have to pull six numbers. But we want to know how many, or the likelihood of getting two. So this is what the question has over here, the left side. But I'm going to do the right side. So what we do is we're given an x equals a probability of an event. So we'll have probability of x is a probability of pulling two. So that's what we're going to try and figure out. Probability of two is equal to so we plug in that eight first so eight factorial let me space it out a bit and then we have eight minus two factorial two factorial so i'm going to go ahead and set uh, instead of doing this all at once i'm going to do the a b and a b so probability of a because it makes it easier when you only have one so that Eight vectoral, eight minus two vectoral, two vectoral. So once again, this is eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one over. Eight minus two is six. So six factorial is six times five times four times three times two times one. Then two factorial is two times one. So this is the math that you'll be doing there. And this is probably the only time I'm going to write out the factorial all at once. So we can cancel some things out. So six is five times seven two, and ones, all, of course, will always cancel out. <clears throat> so it's eight over two, which is equal to four. So probability of event A, which is probability of eight, is four. Um, the probability of B, so let me draw a text up here. You have A probability of A, then we're doing probability of B, and then we're doing probability of A, B. I guess it's A given B. So we're gonna figure out the probability of B here. So that's going to be equal to, uh, so B, we have 45 factorial. And then on the bottom, we have 45, let me, minus, and then we have N. So we took out um, six, and then we added in two, and that's a factorial. And then that's gonna be times by n minus x, so six minus two. Fact, and that's a factorial. Professor? Yeah? Um, so at the top, the a factorial, 
Um, it's eight times seven. Oh, you're right. Thank you for catching that because that would have been bad later. So that was actually 54 times seven, or yeah, eight times seven. So four times seven is 28. That would have been really bad. And if t professors never tell or tell you they never make mistakes, they lie. So this will simplify to 45 factorial over uh, 45. 41 factorial for factorial. Which will simplify to 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 times 41 factorial over 41 factorial and then times one times two times three times four. So the factorials will cancel out. This turns into 11. Uh, 42 and three will simplify. Uh, so that's 14. Oh, wait, 42 times three, three. Yeah, it is 14. Wait, I'm not sure, calculator. My brain is not quite working right now. Fourteen, I was right. And then I can simplify it even more here, here for a seven. So we have 45 times 11 times seven. So 1,078. So the probability of A times B is going to be equal to 28 times 1,078, which is 30,184. And then we have to do the probability of A bar B. <coughs> So that's going to be equal to a plus b, so 8 plus 45 factorial. And over 8 plus 45 minus 6. And then that's also times 6 factorial. So that gives us 53 factorial. Uh, 47 factorial, 6 factorial. Simplifying it out, we do 53 times 52 times 51 times 50. 49 is 48 times 47 factorial. Well, 47 factorial times six times five times three times two times one. Canceling out there. So six, so six and 48. So 48 can be going to, or six can go into 48. So uh, eight times. Five can go into 50 10 times. Four can go into eight twice. And then the twos can cancel out. And then I'm left with a three. So 51 and three. So 51 goes into three goes into 51 17 times.
So we're left with 53 times 52 times 51 times 17 times 49. Or 51 times 52 times 117,083,148. So our final probability will be 30,184 over 117,083,148, which would give us Base probability of okay. zero point zero 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 two five seven seven nine nine six nine. And they went to four digits, decimal places one, two, three, four. So zero point zero 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 three in my case. Um, and that's how you do those annoying questions. <clears throat> so yes, the prob and that's the probability, by the way, of getting two numbers on a lottery. Imagine if you were trying to get all of them. Fun times. Um, what else? Uh, so that's that one. Do you have any other questions that you want to go over? this until um, I can't remember. Uh, so is there any other questions you guys have? Because I just kind of like completely blacked out and didn't turn on the recording for that uh, distribution bit. So really quick to recap that. Um, because I feel uh, remiss to not. When you deal with normal probability is you have a specific chance on, of each number coming up evenly. So to figure it out, you have to have, uh, uh, let me share screen again. To figure out your percentages, you have to count how many events you have and divide one by the number of, event, of events to get the base probability. Then when you ask, you know, what are the chances of it falling between two parts, you just divide up your parts. So I have one or add them up. So one, two, three, five events. So you add all those up and you get your base percentage. Your normal distribution will be something like this, where you have majority of your data in the middle and small amounts at the end. So this is a normal distribution. You see it a lot in biology. Um, the third or two other kinds is binomial, which is a yes, no event. Uh, but you can also get uh, something called a Poisson distribution, which looks like uh, add it up, sorry. Um, which looks like this. So you have a majority of your data in a very small amount of area and it kind of peters out one way, one direction or the next. <clears throat> Used a lot in pathology. So whenever you're looking at diseases or uh, low count events. So quick little recap real quick for the recording. <clears throat> 